Hey everyone, welcome to A Fistful of Dice. My name is Matt. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about prep and how I've been prepping for my games lately. Um, I have a few videos about prep <clears throat> on my channel. Um, in some of them, uh, I type into a Word document. In other ones, I use note cards. Um, I've I've prepped um, like I would write a module. I've prepped literally nothing and just gone into a game with improv. I've tried a ton of different methods. Um, and what I've found is that there is no one method. Um, that's kind of the big takeaway from all of this is that there is no one true best perfect method for prepping for a game. It depends on so many different things and it depends on your creative mindset at the time. It depends on your mood. It depends on the game that you're running. It depends on the players. It depends on whether you're running at home or whether you're running online. There are so many different factors that come into it. And so the best advice I can give you as a DM or GM about prepping is learn a few different techniques that work for you. Okay, whether it's jotting down a few notes beforehand or prepping for weeks and having a few different Word documents handy. This video is about my current preferred method of prep, um, which has I've just started doing over the last few weeks. And I found that for me right now, just in my current mindset, it's the best uh, prepping method for me. So I've been carrying around a few different uh, notebooks with me when I go to work, when I go on lunch, uh, if I leave the house for an extended period of time, I try to bring one of these with me. Uh, this is my uh, one of my D and D notebooks. So um, it has uh, some uh, notes for prep for running sessions. It has some maps, some counter ideas in it. Um, yeah, some counter planning. There's Sands of Sonic Ice game stuff like that. Um, and I also have in here um, the new uh, session of Iron Lords of Zakesh, which I'll just give you a little little peek of it. Oh, you can't see it because it's not out yet. Um, and this right here is uh, my lovely wife got me this little notebook um, for Christmas. It's got cool, really cool Star Wars art on it. I've been using this for my Edge of the Empire campaign. Um, so I don't have much in there yet because we're just kind of kicking it off, but man, that's what I have so far. So we're going to be looking at this, um, for prep today. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of using, um, a few different techniques, um, but mostly it's uh, lazy dungeon master and, um, gnome stew 333 method. So what this means is um, I'm picking out the big aspects of the session. Uh, mostly I look at uh, people, places, plot, encounters, and cool stuff. Okay, and I'm going to talk about what that means here. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. The sun is really bright today, so um, it's hard to get it in the right light. But uh, basically you'll see that, you know, I have it laid out here. I have plot, right? And within plot... I have a few different things. Uh, it could be uh, adventure hooks. It could be role play encounters. It could be something very linear, like, you know, do, 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 do these things in order. It could be um, completely nonlinear, little sandbox things, like, I, you know, adventure hooks and stuff like that. So for this session of Edge of the Empire, by the way, if you're in my Edge of the Empire campaign, stop watching this. Um, uh, get landing clearance codes from Sogan, fight slash hack down to Tunnel 57, liberate slaves, and leave with spice, okay? So basically in this session, the idea is that they're going to Ryloth um, to the spice mines, and they're going to try to fight their way down to the tunnel, or, you know, talk their way or hack their way down to the tunnels, and uh, save one of the character's sisters, who is a slave in the spice mines of Ryloth. <laughs> So these are the things that I know are going to most likely happen. So they need to get landing clearance to, la to land on Ryloth. They're going to get that from this Sogan guy who he's down in people here. Um, they're going to fight, hack their way down to Tunnel 57, which, hey, there's Tunnel 57 right there, and liberate slaves and leave with the spice, okay? So 
going down from the plot, we have places. We have the Mog Tog, which is Sogan's uh, Wayfarer Freighter. So that's probably the first location that they're going to go to. Uh, Voba Mine, which is uh, the mine that they're going to. Spice Mine in the Nightlands, uh, which the Nightlands are uh, on the dark side of Ryloth because Ryloth is a tidally locked planet. And then Tunnel 57, which is uh, where the tunnel, the actual tunnel within Voba Mine that they're going to. And then I have people, important NPCs. Sogan, who is the whippid mercenary with one tusk that they'll be getting the landing clearance from. His ship is the Mogtog. Turk, who's the mine overseer. He's an Aqualish thug, so he's in charge of the Vova mine. And then we have Makara, uh, who is also called Bonduna, who is the slave uh, leader, and she is the character's sister who they're, who they're trying to save. So the big, the big revelation is that they keep hearing about this Bonduna, uh, who's considered like a hero to the slaves, and then they find out that it's the character's sister that they're looking for. Um, then I have encounters. So these are, you know, fights. These are uh, most likely combat encounters. Uh, Sogan uh, betrays Posh, one of the characters. There's a possible firefight there. They could also intimidate or talk their way out of that. Uh, there's the Aqualish thugs and security droids that run the Voba mine. And then uh, I want to have Turk, the main overseer, get in a mining drill, like Total Recall style, and they have to fight him in the mining drill, right? Okay. So... Then down here I have cool stuff, which, you know, kind of is sticking out. You know, you have plot, people, places, encounters, that all seems standard, and then cool stuff. Hack security droids, demo charges, Turk sends distress messages to Timo. So that's Turk, the overseer, sending a distress message to Timo the Hut, who is hunting the party. So he's able to kind of send a message out to Timo. So the idea here is that cool stuff is things that could happen in the in the session to spice things up. It could be cool elements that the players can uh, take advantage of. So hacking the security droids to have them fight for them. Uh, demo charges, you know, it's a mine, so there's probably going to be explosives to clear new tunnels and stuff like that. And then you have uh, the distress signal, which is kind of a cool plot element that will tie into future sessions. So the cool stuff can be, you know, items. It could be... Um, you know, uh, a, a certain terrain feature or environmental effect, you know, that is going to happen. Um, it's just stuff that is going to make the, uh, the session unique and kind of cool. So this is the whole, this is all of the prep that I will need, right? This is the, what I'm going to be using for the entire session right here. Um, but I, you know, I have this blank page over here. I'll use this to take notes, you know, uh, if anything else comes up, uh, kind of come up with stuff on the fly. If I come up with an NPC, I can write down their name, stuff like that. If you are wanting to go more in depth with this prep method, um, and, and, uh, you know, you have three things for everything, you could have three bullets underneath each of these things, right? So that's kind of like Lazy Dungeon Master style. So you could do um, get landing clearance codes from Sogan. Underneath, you could have certain complications that might come up from getting the clearance codes. Like the clearance codes are actually outdated. You know, you could have that underneath there. Or um, uh, uh, Sogan doesn't actually have the codes and just wants to lure them into a trap. You know, you can have little things like that. Or you can have a description of uh, what it looks like when that happens or something like that. Uh, if you had, you know, for your people, you could have a physical description or personality description about what they look like, what they sound like, you know, things like that. So you could go more in depth with it. For me, this is just enough. I am, I am veering more and more towards an improv style of DMing. And for a game like Edge of the Empire, which relies so heavily on the narrative results of the dice, this is a perfect amount of prep for that style of game. It gives me just enough. Now, obviously, uh, I don't have anything mechanical here. I don't have any stat blocks for monsters. I don't have... Um, I don't have any uh, mechanics for items and stuff like that. So that is something that I prep separately. For Edge of the Empire, I have my adversary cards. I use those for my stat blocks. For something like D&D, &D, um, I would use, I photocopy the stat blocks and then edit them from there. So I, I, I do make sure that I prep my encounters and I'm not just coming up with monster stats on the fly. It's important to me to have that stuff, you know, figured out before the, before the session. But this to me, 
this gives me enough where I can, I have a lot to draw from in this session. I have so much to keep this session rolling, to keep the pace exciting, to keep things moving. But at the same time, I don't feel like I'm staring at a page of notes the entire session. This is just enough for me. I feel like I have enough breathing room to really be creative and be imaginative and come up with some, some cool stuff and improv and also give the players a little bit more agency. Now, <clears throat> another method that I've talked about um, but haven't made a video about. There's actually a, a Barker did an excellent video on this prep method, and uh, you can go check that out on his channel. There'll be a link down below. Is the IR method. Now, IR stands for <clears throat> Intro Action Role Play Resolution. This is something that I saw on Gnome Stew, and I've been using. And basically, uh, for each of these things, you would have a scene. So, scene one the intro, like describe the scene, what's going to happen. Action. Is there combat? What sort of mechanics are involved? What do the PCs need to do or what is going to be happening to them? Role play. What are the role play elements of this scene or encounter? Uh, what information will they learn? Who can they talk to? And then resolution. What sort of loot information or other rewards? What comes of, you know, the culmination of this encounter? Now, I find that this method of prep is very freeing. Um, it makes you think about all of these elements, which are all important. So it makes you think about the role play elements of a combat encounter, the action elements of a role play encounter, you know, so on and so forth. It makes you think about lots of different things. But when I was prepping with this for my Edge of the Empire game, I started to feel very constrained. Um, and I'm not sure why that was the case, but I started to feel like I was blocked in somehow, and so I just started prepping completely different. And this kind of bullet point method has evolved from there. And I'm gonna be using this bullet point method for um, for Iron Lords of Zakesh, as well as uh, some Provoker sessions going forward. So, uh, yeah, guys, so that's just a little look into my, uh, my prepping method. Um, you know, I might draw maps and stuff as well uh, in these little notebooks along with the bullet point prep so I have an idea of where things are located and where, uh, you know, things are, are happening. Um, real quick, before I end the video, I'll go ahead and show you how I, how I came to this. So, uh, this first page in the notebook here, this is like general information about the party. I remember, you know, who everyone's playing, their character names, their race, and their career. I have some of their assets, like their ship and the upgrades for the ship, a droid that they have, their obligation, and then like the story elements of the campaign, the thing that I need to keep in mind, you know, or the big picture. And this is kind of me like mind mapping the session initially before I figured out how I was going to prep for it. So I kind of had some, you know, different ideas of how it was all going to be mapped out, the different encounters and stuff. And then it eventually just turned into this. So I feel incredibly comfortable running the game with just this amount of prep. Um, I might do a video talking about um, how the session went using this amount of prep. Uh, what are the downsides to it? What are the uh, what are the what are the pros to it? Um, but yeah, so let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm always happy to talk about prep. Um, and uh, if you normally type your prep out. Uh, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling stagnant, if you feel like you can't um, get the creativity, the imagination that you're trying to get into your sessions out there, try writing stuff down for a while. You know, I kind of go 50-50. I write stuff down. I type it out. Um, I don't have a huge preference for either of them, but I find that writing down sometimes gets me to think about things a little differently. So maybe give it a try sometime. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. Take care and happy gaming all.